Hello everyone, this is Dr. Step Easy Hands On Dr. Kim Kyung Wan today. I'm going to talk about Austin's Guide System Kit, and this is the third lecture in this end, and I'm going to talk about One Guide Kit. As you all know, CBCT, oral scanner, and other digital devices have emerged, and now with digital technology, we can do virtual surgery and find position of final prosthesis and accordingly make a guide and place implant. With digital guide surgery system, the fixture's position, direction, depths can be accurately predicted and surgery can be performed accordingly. That is the digital guided system. So, the three basic features of one guide system. Let's take a look. First, using digital device to check the shape of final prosthesis. Virtual surgical planning is used to accurately find position, direction, and depths of the fixture. This is the tool for that. Second, Digital guides are available from multiple companies. One Guide Kit is the most simple and has the shortest drilling sequence. That is the main advantage. The concept of One Guide Drill is, as mentioned before, is similar to 1 to 2 taper kit drilling. For instance, if you place 4.5 mm fixture on normal bone, after initial drilling, you drill 3.5 and 4.5 and then place the fixture. This is very short and simple drilling sequence that is big advantage. Third, you can use this in minimal arch distance. In other words, one guide template is designed as closed hole type but depending on necessity, if interarch distance is tight, you can create open type guide hole. That's for a shorter interarch distance. In essence, it does not have metal sleeve, so on the template itself, if missing teeth area's mesiodistal space is 6 millimeters, you can create one guide template. That's possible with this system. Characteristics of one guide kit template. As mentioned, the basic spec is it does not have metal sleeve and the whole design is closed system. However, as was in the past, if you want metal sleeve, you can make it so that it does have metal sleeve. And then the guide hole size basically is 5.1 and 5.8 in diameter. So 5.1 diameter, the fixture size is 3.54 and 4.5 in diameter. So if you want to place 5.0 diameter fixture, you can use 5.8 diameter wide hole design. So you can use the two different holes on the same template, so you don't need to change the template and use one template to place a smaller implant and 5.0 diameter wider implants. And basically, the hole itself is closed the system, but it, when the interarch distance is short, you can use open type and you can use this guide system in smaller interarch distances as well. The one guide kit, in essence, has 5.1, 5.8 wide hole design, and drill is prepared accordingly, and for 5.8 diameter, the drill itself has gold coating, so you can easily choose and identify 5.1 and 5.8 drills. Let's look at one guide kit components. There are largely three types of tools. The first is template anchor tool. You can put the template on one position and you can fix it using anchor drill and anchor screw. The second is drilling tool. Basically using one guide system to place an implant, it's a system to do drilling for that. 
Third is following implants template, you create drill hole and then using the tool you can place the fixture yourself. These are the three tools available. First, anchor drill and anchor screw and anchor driver. As mentioned before, you can uh, fixate the one guard template more firmly in the case if there's teeth, the one guard template does not really move. But if it is fully dentulous because of resilience of mucosa, the template can move or there can be deviations. So using anchor screws, if you place anchor screws on palatal and buccal area, you can fixate the template position and you can maintain it more firmly. There's a lateral anchor system. Another option is vertical anchor system. In other words, lateral anchor system at times palatal or the thickness of buccal gingiva or other factors may cause deviations. So on computer, you can not get the fixture position you had virtually planned. And then in order to prevent this, using vertical twisted drill and bone anchor, you can prevent vertical and horizontal movement of one guide template. This is the vertical anchor system. Especially for these cases. Especially for fully dentulous cases. And if there is long span free and distally, you can position the template more firmly and use it. If you use vertical anchor and as you've seen before, if you use lateral anchor system, you'd be able to position surgical template accurately. And after moving bone anchor system, you place fixture, and after that, you can connect it like this using fixture, and you can get vertical anchorage and fixate it. Next is tissue punch. In essence, when we use these guide system, we do a lot of flapless surgery. When you do flapless surgery, you do tissue punch out and you use this tool for that. The diameter is 3.5 and 4.5. Next is initial drill. After you do tissue punch, you accurately define fixture position using this. So the length of the drill is 5 mm. You use the short drill to mark the position of the fixture. Using this short initial drill, you can get double contact concept. The double contact concept is initial drill template is in contact and the guide drill is 8 millimeters and if you do initial drill in essence 5.7 millimeter short drill hole is created and after that you can use the drill length of your choice and using one guide drill you'd contact a bone on the bottom on the top you would have contact with a template so you'd be able to drill stably and there will be no shaking you'd be able to place the implant in desired area when you use the short initial drill, you'll be able to drill firmly and stably in desired position. The next is the most important one guide drill. The one guide drill, as shown, is like this. For a regular 5.1 diameter hole, you can use one guide drill with 5.0 barrel, 0 0.1 difference, and for 5.8 diameter hole, you can use 5.7 millimeter barrel drill. Difference is the same. So on the desired position, you can choose the length and the 
One guide drill length options available range from 6 mm to 13. You choose the fixture length you want and then choose drill accordingly. This is very similar to one to two taper kit drilling sequence. You can use taper fixture like TS3 and this tool is optimized for that and multi-step design is inherent in this drill. Next is flattening drill. Sometimes when you do initial drilling, at times it doesn't go in full length. For instance, there could be narrow ridge or there can be inclination on the bone. So in those cases, a slipping can occur and initial drilling is not done to the desired point. On the inclined ridge or narrow ridge, flattening process needs to be done and for that flattening drill is available and regular and wide hole is available for this tool as well next is one guide path drill one guide path drill unlike flattening drill is for upper anterior in the upper anterior on the socket towards the palatal the bone is harder so one guide drill can slip slightly in those cases if you create a drilling path you can remove deviation and that is the path drill this pass drill is the same as the initial drill. Basically, you do 7 mm drilling first and using longer drill, using the double contact concept drilling is done. When placing an upper anterior socket, no additional work is needed for you to drill stably when you use this one guide pass drill. Next is cortical drill. In the case of one to two taper kit for hard bone, the so-called dominal drill, fixture sized drill, we scale up and do oversized drilling. However, in one guide drill, because there is barrel, Simply put, in hard bone, when you place 4.5 and 5.0 at times, when you place implant, insertion torque is too much and the bone is too hard. You remove implant fixture and do cortical drilling to remove superior cortical bone in order to get the desired initial stability and prevent excessive torque. This cortical drill is the answer. Next is no mount driver. This tool is used when we place implant using surgical engine. This is not a pre-mount, but it's a no mount. And fixture is installed. The diameter of no mount driver is 0 0.1 millimeter smaller. For instance, for 5.1 millimeter regular hole, you use 4.9 millimeter diameter, and for 5.8, you use 5.6 millimeter diameter. Barrel is formed that way. The reason why we have this is because there can be jamming because of the guide tool. In those cases, you can more easily remove mounted driver. That is why there is such tolerance. The no mount driver is marked in yellow and black and you can easily control depths of fixture and gain accurate expositioning. Also, the no mount driver, you use it to install implant approximately 80% and then you remove no mount driver. That is ideal because if you use no mount driver, you can come across jamming and this is to prevent such possibility. So you use no mount driver 80% engine driven and then use fixture driver, in other words, hand torque wrench to place the implant easily put use handle wrench or torque wrench and control depths of fixture and control depths of final position and get accurate exposition 
As mentioned, the fixture driver, compared to the previous one, the barrel height is 5 millimeters, so short, and is smaller, 0.2 millimeters. Barrel height is 5 millimeters, so short, and is smaller by 0.2 millimeters compared to Nomad driver. So diameter 4.7 and 5.4 wide hole. In that case, for 5.8 millimeter diameter, use 5.4, and for 5.1 millimeter diameter, use 4.7. So this is used because when there is jamming during implant placement, you can more easily remove fixture driver, and there's difference in drill sizes and barrel sizes, so you can conveniently and easily use it. Take 5.1 millimeter diameter one guide hole for instance. One guide drill is 0.1 smaller, so 5.0 millimeter better. No mount driver is 0.1 smaller from that, so 4.9 millimeter diameter. And finally, hand wrench fixture driver is smaller than 4.7 millimeter diameter, and barrel size is reduced there. If you remember this, you'd be able to replace implants without any jamming, and you would be able to do that accurately. Next, one guide kit drilling sequence will be looked at. One guide, if you look over here, TS3 4.0 fixture has been installed in normal bone as discussed using double contact concept. Initial drill is done using short drill and 3.5 and 4.5 drilling should be done and then you'll be able to place implant without any issues. That is the design. If the bone is hard, if necessary, use a size bigger 4.5 diameter drilling. And after that, if TS3 4.5 fixture is placed on normal bone, do initial drilling first and 3.5 4.5 should be used. And if it is hard bone and if initial torque is too much, as mentioned, use cortical drill. Bearing the same concept in mind, if we place 5.0 diameter fixture with the on normal bone regarding wide barrel, do initial drilling twice 3.5 and 5.0 and then you can place the implant next i'm going to briefly talk about easy hands-on we're going to look at using one guide kit and one guide template to predict the final prosthesis as well as position direction and depth of implant and we're going to try to place the fixture in a desired position and through hands-on i'm going to briefly explain this to you so the first is number 45 46 47 missing case as shown on the front there's residual teeth making it tooth bearing and we're going to do template adaptation and check whether it's not moving and we're going to drill and place the fixture Hands on, we'll begin briefly. I'll begin hands-on practice. First of all, the case is 45, 46, 47. Three teeth are missing. And for 45, 4.5 by 10 millimeter TS3 fixture is going to be placed. And for 46 and 47, 5.0 by 10 millimeter TS3 fixtures are going to be used. I will now show you how it's done. First, we are going to use the one guide template that has been prepared and I'm going to put it on the model. And you, after you do this, like as shown, 
If it is teeth bearing, if you get support from the adjacent teeth, you need to check the window between teeth so that the position is accurate. You need to be very accurate and you check the template once again to proceed the procedure. First of all, number 45, the hull size 5.1 tissue punch is going to be used to remove gingiva. And as you can see, 3.5 regular size hole tissue punch is going to be chosen. After that, it's connected to the handpiece. For 45, side 45, I'm going to put it on and you can see that it fits on the hole. Using tissue punch, I'm going to remove gingival tissue on top. Removal is done for 46 and 47. 4.0 millimeter tissue punch is going to be used to remove gingiva in those regions. For 46 tissue punch is connected and if this is thoroughly done, there is no stopper, so you need to sufficiently do it to remove the tissue for 40 site. I have completed site 46 and for 47, this is an open type hull, so you can put it sideways and you need to contact the lingual side for sure to do tissue punch. After you do tissue punch, if there is remaining gingiva, in those cases, remove the template and check if the tissue has been thoroughly removed. 46 and 47, it has been removed well. Number 45, there is still a little bit remaining. If the surface of alveola is not flat, sometimes tissue can remain. If there is soft tissue, if you do drilling, there's not a huge issue, but there can be uh, soft tissue impaction, so you remove it like this. Forty-five. 46, 47. Tissue punch was used to remove gingiva. Template is going to be placed on. Now we are going to proceed. Tissue punch is done and use initial drill. As shown, initial drill is used. As shown, I'm going to connect it and I'm going to drill full length. If it does not go in full length and if there is some sort of jamming, as I mentioned, you need to use flattening drill. As you can see, it goes full length, but if, if you feel like it's not going fully in, you need to use flattening drill. And if there is inclination in remaining alveola, you need to use flattening drill full length. After that, initial drill will go in sufficiently. Once again, I'm going to use the initial drill and use stopper and drill full length. Initial drill is going in full length. After that, as mentioned, 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill is going to be used. 3.5 millimeter drill. 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill. I've talked about double contact concept. When you put it in the hole, the tip hits the bottom of the hole created by initial drill and on the top it is in contact with the template so 
it is in contact with the bone structure as well as the template, so it is double contact concept. It does not shake sideways and it is very stable. Drilling can be done like this. We go in full length. Of course, it cuts well, so it does not generate a lot of heat, but you need to do a lot of irrigation and do up and down motion to drill full length. 3.5 millimeter drilling is done. Now for 45. 4.5 by 10 millimeter is going to be placed. 4.5 by 10 millimeter final drilling is going to be done. After you place the drill, choose the drill. Three point five drilling is done, and in that area, as shown. 4.5 by 10 millimeter drill is going to be used to full length, a drill full length. So to minimize heat generation, you're going to do up and down motion. Drilling is now complete. And after that, no mounted driver is going to be used. Mini regular Y, there are three options. 4.5 regular size is going to be used. No mount driver is selected. It has been chosen. You're going to change to placement mode. Also, check always extra orally so that this is placement mode. If it is drilling mode, it can be a problem. Now, you put the fixture on its place and using the engine, so you go in 80% up to the point that there's a yellow marking. So you do 80% with engine and after that, fixture driver, in other words, hand wrench is going to be used and the fixture driver is going to be used because fixture is inside the bone. You don't know whether it's an accurate position. You check whether it has been well adapted and using hand wrench, you're going to use hand wrench to connect it. And using this, we're going to find the position. Along with depth control, it, the hole of one guide and the driver's yellow marking needs to be aligned. Then you can get the depths and hex positioning that was initially planned. You can see insertion torque is over 30 Newton centimeters. And this area, this is the point that we want to be in. And we can see that the fixture has been placed in the intended position. Now I'm going to move on to 46. We did tissue punch earlier and the same with 46, we use initial drill. 3.5 by 6 millimeter initial drill is going to be used. The barrel is going to be 5.7 barrel. I'm going to use one guide drill and change to drilling mode. After I do that, you can see that this is in full contact and initial drilling is going to be done. Because there's heat generation, I'm going to do up and down motion to, and drill in full length. If this is not full length, as I mentioned earlier, you use flattening drill to flatten the surface. 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill is chosen and it's being connected. As I mentioned, double contact concept is used. 
And now it is going to be in contact with the bone that has been through initial drilling and the top part is going to be on contact with the template. The full length of drilling is going to be done. So full length up until the stop. We are going to do up and down to minimize the uh, heat generation. 3.5 by 10 millimeter drilling is done and final drilling is going to be done. 5.0 by 10 millimeter drill is going to be chosen with wide barrel. This is the same. I'm going to put it on and in contact, I'm going to drill in full length. Up and down motion is done to minimize heat generation. I'm going to drill full length. Drilling is now complete on the no mount driver, regular and wide. There are these options. I'm going to choose the wide one and connect it. I'm going to change from drilling mode to placement mode. Accordingly, implant is going to be placed. So engine driven drill in up to 80% and remove as shown. So in order to avoid jamming, you don't go in full, but you drill in 80% and you use fixture driver, wide type. You use this to fully position the fixture that is inside the bone. Using hand wrench, you're going to do final fixture positioning. You do depth control and the yellow part. Once this is accurately aligned, you can get the intended position. The yellow part, it's aligned here. And insertion torque is over 30 Newton centimeters. Now it's in the position that we have planned. The depth control and hex positioning is accurately done. Two implants have been placed. For 47, I'm going to begin 3.5 millimeter initial drill with wide barrel is going to be used. The drill hole is open type and as shown, even if it hits the opposing arch, you can go in inside like this. Even if inter arch distance is narrow, it is accessible. This is open hole type, so on the lingual, when it is not open, you are going to put the barrel there and hold it stably to do the drilling. So up and down motion is going to be done. So you're going to go in full length for initial drilling. Initial drilling is done. After that, I'm going to choose 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill to do the next drilling. If the hole is closed type, it hits the opposing arch, but this is open type, so it is accessible. And I'm going to hold the template and accurately do the drilling. Up and down is going to be done. And final position, uh, you're going to drill full length and check. You're going to use the open area and do drilling. You drill up to the planned depths. Before placement, check extra orally whether it's in placement mode and place the wimp plant. It is in contact with the template and now you're going in. Drilling has been done 80%. Remove no mount driver and the fixture in the bone. We are going to position it accurately and this is the same using hand wrench. Depth control is done. 
and we are going to get the hex. The guide hole is open type, it looks open, but cl in clinically, you can get accurate result using a lingual hole. Position is central, and the insertion torque is 30 newton centimeters, and a three implant has been done. And at this stage, remove the template, connect the healing abutment to the implant placed. Healing abutment that was planned is going to be placed on number 45. The same with number 47. If the patient mouth is narrow, you can use an instrument to hold the deriver and you can attach healing abutment like this. Four, three implants, 45, 46, 47, have been planned using CBCT and we have placed the implants in the planned area and you can check it with your own eyes. When using one guide, if you start off with a difficult case, there's considerable chance of there being deviation. It requires a learning curve. You should start off with simpler cases, perhaps partial edentulous case, one or two teeth missing, aesthetic zone of upper anterior where implant position is critical. Do those simple cases where template does not move. And then once you get more used to it, you can choose a more complicated and complex cases and then you'll be able to perform one guide surgery with more confidence. I hope you've gotten to know about one guide kit better. Hands-on practice is now complete. Let's look at the questions from Q&A. This question is from Dr. Lee Jung-hyun. And during fixture placement, what should I do when no mouth driver is jammed? I've mentioned this in my lecture briefly. Basically, compared to guided hole, the barrel of drill is slightly smaller and no mounted driver is smaller than that. Uh, this is so to minimize jamming phenomena. However, at times when we use template to place implants, it can get real tight. And when you use engine, in other words, if the torque is high, reverse the engine slightly, almost as if you're removing the implant. And once you do that, it gets loose. So once the implant fixture is slightly loose, use fixture driver to get the final position. In that way, you'll be able to avoid major issues. No amount of fixture driver, the barrel height is lower, so there's less jamming. So there's less problem. If there is jamming, if necessary, do reverse and loosen the fixture slightly, then it will be able to solve your problems. Next question, how can I check whether the template is fitting correctly? When it is teeth bearing, when you receive support from the adjacent teeth, you can accurately check using the window. In the second hands-on, in edentulous cases, it's kind of difficult. In those cases, optionally, you can use CT checker that you use on the drill hole. You check using this on the drill hole and take CT and you look at the template position and checker in order to see whether the play fixture is placed in the intended area and drill hole is formed. You can use CT for this. In this way, you'll be able to check whether the template and the results are as was intended. So this is the end of the questions. If you have further questions as you look at this lecture, feel free to leave your questions. 
and then I'll respond accordingly. Thank you for watching.